Hello, welcome back. Today we're doing note 6B. We're continuing our conversation about life. Yesterday's notes should help you do this quick review. So if you haven't done note 6A yet, do that first and then come back. I also want you to pause this and fill in that quick review and then unpause it and come back to get the answers. All right. Welcome back. Here we go. So light waves are transverse waves, which means that they trap the energy travels at right angles to the direction of travel, like a switchback on a mountain road. Light that hits objects is either absorbed, reflected, or transmitted. Objects that are opaque either absorb or reflect the light that hits them. Objects that are translucent partially transmit light, and objects that are transparent fully transmit light. Reflection occurs when light bounces off of an object and can be regular which means that it's even and shiny and you see yourself or diffuse, which is when it's uneven, it's matte and you can't see yourself. Refraction occurs when light bends due to a change in speed as it moves from one medium to another. Did you get it all? Good job. All right, if you need to pause it, I'm going to clear it and move on. So yesterday we discussed the wave behavior of light. When light bounces off of an object, that's called reflection. Typically, when we think about reflection, we think of mirrors. So there are three types of mirror that you need to know. The first one is called a plain mirror, and that's just a regular, everyday, flat mirror. It gives us a virtual reflection, though. It does not give us a real reflection. And we know that because you talk all the time about when you take a selfie and it looks opposite. And that's because you don't see yourself the way other people see yourself. You see it opposite. And the uses for a plain mirror are everyday uses. Next up, we've got a concave mirror. Concave, meaning that it caves in or curves in like a cave. Uh, you can get a real or a virtual image from a uh, concave mirror. It depends on how far away you hold it. Concave mirrors make the item appear larger. You see less of the area than you would in a plain mirror, but you see it bigger and you see it better. So it's very often used in makeup mirrors. Then we've got convex. A convex mirror is shaped like that. It curves out. You can only get a virtual image from a convex mirror. So a convex mirror like this one. So you can see that it is not flat, it curves out. And these are very often the ones you see in the corners of the gas station or the, the store or whatever, so that the person that's at the counter can still see down all the aisles because this is up in the corner and they can look and see the whole store. Now you don't see as much detail, but you can see more area. I don't need to know what color the guy's eyes are. I need to see that he's stuffing chips into his coat and stop him. So that's what these are for. They're very often used as security mirrors. And then the other thing these get used for, if you've ever looked at a, um, if you've ever looked at a bus uh, mirror, a side mirror, or um, on some of those big trailers and things, they have, why is that gray and cloudy? I want to be able to see it clearly. And that made it go away. So now I got to bring it back there. It's still gray. Why is it gray? Stop being gray. So now that I've done that, I won't ever have it not be gray. And y'all, well, anyway. So uh, the other thing that can be used for is for rear or side 
view mirrors. So very often when you have a large vehicle and you need to be able to see all the way around to the, the end of the back of the vehicle, you have a mirror like this on the side so that you can see all the way back. Just like you can see a whole lot of my classroom because this mirror is bent. You can even, even though that smart board is right over there, you can see it reflected here. You shouldn't be able to see that if it was a flat mirror, but you can because it's curved. All right, so now we're going to draw uh, what the angles of incidence and reflection are for each of these types of mirrors. So you've got um, some room down here at the bottom of your paper to do this. So we're going to divide the paper up into three pieces. Um, if you are doing this from home, you might want to open up Canvas and create a Canvas drawing and then insert it. So we're going to start with the plain mirror. We know that the plain mirror is the flat everyday mirror. So when I stand on this side, I have me on the other side, but I'm not really over there on the other side. It just looks like I am. Then we have our concave mirror. Now, I want you to think about what's gonna happen to the light rays here. If, if you, do you know what a culvert pipe is? A culvert pipe, one of those big concrete pipes that you see like on the side of the road and they put it down to go like under roads and stuff for drainage and sewage pipes and stuff, those big concrete pipes. Okay, we're gonna pretend that we get inside one of those. We've got a little bouncy ball and we're gonna throw that bouncy ball at the, uh, at the inside of the, of the pipe. So we're standing inside of the pipe, right? And the wall is curving up over our heads like this and the wall is curving under our feet like this. So it's kind of like a concave mirror. It's a concave surface. If I have a bouncy ball and I throw it out, it's gonna come right back to me. If I throw it up, it's gonna come right back to me. If I throw it down, it's gonna come right back to me because the walls are all there to reflect it back toward the center. And that's what happens to the light as well. So the light comes in and hits the mirror in these straight, even lines, but because the mirror is not flat, the lines don't reflect evenly back off of it the way they do on a plane mirror like we drew the other day. Uh, this line is gonna bounce back into the center and go there. This line is gonna bounce back into the center and go there. This line back into the center and so's that one. So you have a point here called the focal point. So that's the point where you wanna stand if you want the mirror to work just right. So you can see how an object would end up being flipped upside down in this kind of a mirror. So if you have a concave makeup mirror, if you get far enough away from it, you're, it's not so big anymore. Now it's upside down. And then last we have our convex mirror. So it curves out. All right, so now we're gonna get outside of the culvert pipe and we're gonna be standing outside of it. And so the wall is gonna be curving away from us over the top and it's gonna be curving away from us on the bottom. So when I throw the ball straight out, it might come straight back to me. But if I try to throw it up at this point, what's gonna happen? Right, it's gonna go boom, off into nowhere. I'm gonna lose my bouncy ball. How about if I throw it toward the bottom? Same thing, but I might find it because it's just going to hit the grass. So we have those same light rays are hitting this mirror. But because this mirror is bent going the other direction, the light rays bounce out and away. So this one's going to go out that way, and that one's going to go out that way, and that one's going to go out that way, and that one's going to go out that way. So you can see how an object that was only this big here is now this big in the reflection. So it makes whatever the object is that much bigger and uh, easier to see that larger area. All right, so uh, you get that drawn. I'm gonna move ahead, but pause if you need to get that drawn down. All right, um, and if you need a reminder for how to insert your image into your document, just let me know. 
All right, so when light is refracted, so we talked about reflection, now we're talking about refraction. So when light is refracted, it is bent due to changing speed as it moves from one medium to another. A lens takes advantage of refraction to change the way that we see objects. A lens is a curved piece of clear glass or other transparent material. So it could be water. We made a lens out of water yesterday. We used an arrow, remember? It can be acrylic. It can be plastic. It can be glass. Just like mirrors, lenses can be different shapes, which changes the image that we see when we use them. Uh, again, pause it if you need to, but I'm moving on. All right, so what types of lenses do we need to know about? Sorry about that. Hopefully you weren't using headphones. So the two types of lenses that you have to know about, there are many types of lenses, okay? Like you need to know there's lots and lots of types of lenses, but the two types of lenses that you have to know about for me are concave and convex. Now, why aren't we talking about a plain lens? Right, the definition is it's curved. A plain lens isn't a lens, it's a window. Okay, all right, so concave, what shape is it gonna be? Right, it's gonna be curved in. It's gonna cave in. Now the light goes through it, so it is gonna be curved in on both sides if it's a true concave, concave lens. Convex curves out. Concave lens gives you a virtual image only. Concave can be real or virtual. It depends on the distance. Depends on how far away you're holding it. Concave is used for nearsighted glasses. So if you are nearsighted, then you need concave lenses. Um, I am incredibly nearsighted. My glasses have to be made specially because they would be so stupid thick to get the curve in that's needed to adjust for my how bad my eyes are. Um, but you, you know, you can't really tell. But when you see the um, when you see the lens before it's cut to fit into the glasses, you can tell that it curves in in the center. Uh, and then concave lenses are also used, well, actually both concave and convex are used in telescopes. And binoculars. Convex lenses are used in far, really? Convex lenses are used in far-sighted glasses and in magnifying glasses. So, you know, magnifying glass, the, right. Now I'm hoping I'll remember to bring mine in from home tomorrow, but I do have this. So this is a magnifier that um, you, you're supposed to put on the paper. And so you can see that it says second right there and it's pretty small, but when I put that on it, it is magnified. And then you can also see that the green is still visible up here above where the paper actually stops because it's magnifying it so much that it appears that there. You see how much taller it is there? So that's the magnification. Now what's really crazy is if I get this far enough away, it flips me upside down. Isn't that crazy? I'm upside down. Isn't that wild? So any magnifying glass, you hold it far enough away, the object flips upside down. Close to it, it makes it bigger, but then you move far enough away, it reverses it. Again, pause if you need to, but I'm moving on. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing. We've got to draw. This time, we've only got to divide it into two sections. Again, 
I recommend if you're doing this from home to open up Canvas, draw this in Canvas, and then insert the image. If you don't know how to do that, please ask. All right, so we have our concave lens here. And I am very much exaggerating how much these things curve in. I need y'all to know that. Um, so we've got our concave lens. We do need to draw it in the middle because the light, the, the light has to go through it. So just like before, we have our even regular light that's coming into the lens. But once it goes through the lens, it bends. So you can see how something that was only this tall now is going to be this tall by the light going through that lens. So you can see why someone who needs objects brought closer because they are nearsighted, how this might help. All right. And then we've got our convex lens. And again, the light rays are going to come in even, regular. But once they hit the lens, they're going to bend. And this time, they're going to bend this way. So again, we have a focal point. We have the perfect spot to hold the magnifying glass at. And then once you get further from that, what happens? The bottom line becomes the top. The top line becomes the bottom. It's upside down. So that explains why when I use this magnifier, where is it? Oh, I found it so easily before. There it is. I'm upside down. Isn't that just so weird? <laughs> okay. Get that copy down if you need to. I'm going to clear. Going once, going twice. Bye. All right. Now, these are just some things I wanted to just look at. Just some little reminders. So just a reminder that concave curves in, convex curves out. A concave lens causes light rays to spread apart. A convex lens causes the light rays to converge. A concave mirror causes the light rays to spread the convex causes it to oh i'm doing it opposite the concave mirror causes the light rays to meet and the convex mirror causes them to spread out so it's exactly the opposite the lenses and the mirrors do the opposite all right then i just want to show you you know how a spoon it's got the convex surface on the outside and the concave surface on the inside and when you look at the back of the spoon, it shows you can see so much more. So she does look shorter. So she's much taller here and stretched out here. But look how much more of the fence we can see. So here it's only one, two, three, four sections of the, the fence or whatever she's leaning against. Here it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like we can see way down there because of that curved outer surface. Here, she's upside down because it's curved in, and then it's also been enlarged. Um, and then, I, like I said, I wanted you to know that there are other kinds of lenses than just the ones that you have to know about. If you ever become an optician, a person that makes glasses for people, you're going to need to know that all of these types of lenses exist. So there's a double convex lens, which is what we are looking at, and a double concave lens. And that's what you have to know for me. But there's a plano convex lens, like this one where it's flat on one side and curved out on the other. There's a plano concave lens where it curves in on one side and is flat on the other. And then there's the positive meniscus and the negative meniscus, which just it curves like a spoon. It curves on both sides the same direction. All right, that is it for notes 6B. Make sure you hang on to these. The lab is gonna be Thursday. Um, so if you're absent on Wednesday for these notes and you're gonna come tomorrow, Please make sure you wear your closed-toed shoes and you put your hair up. And then um, we'll have the quiz on this on Monday of next week. So make sure you've got your notes done by then. Have a lovely day. Make good decisions. Bye.